Hello everyone. Welcome to edupediaworld.com and thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. This is Vikas Patil. This is the second session of the chapter Structure of the Interior of Earth. In this session, we are going to understand how seismic waves are used to determine the thickness of earth's layers in this session we are going to try and achieve the following objectives analyze how scientists use seismic waves to find out the extent of layers of the earth explain how seismic waves are used to determine the thickness of the earth's layers using appropriate diagrams before we begin our exploration about the methods used to find the thickness of earth's layers let us look at some of the common misconceptions that exist regarding the same humans have been able to reach deeper than the earth's crust the crust is only what we see as continents the thickness of the crust is uniform throughout all these are misconceptions let us explore the facts if humans have not reached very deep how do seismic waves help us study the interior of the earth let us try and understand how it is done following is a description of the experiment to find out the thickness of the crust to find the thickness of the crust p waves are very useful these experiments were initiated by a dutch physicist Mohorovicic who proved the existence of the crust and the mantle consider the figure given e is the point on the earth's surface where an artificial explosion is created as a result of this seismic waves will travel in all directions p waves will also travel in all direction one such p waves will travel along the path e b upon reaching the crust mantle boundary which is known as the mohorovicic discontinuity or simply the moho it is partly refracted into the mantle and partly reflected back to the surface of the earth where it is recorded at a seismic recording station r another set of p waves would travel from e to the recording station r along the surface so there will be two sets of p waves recorded by station r let's assume the ground distance between e the place of explosion and r the recording station 160 km and the explosion is created at sharp 9 am the first set of p waves which travel along the surface reach recording station after 32 seconds so that means the first set of p waves took 32 seconds to reach recording station the second set of p waves which travel through the crust and are reflected back from the moho reach after 40 seconds 
We know that ground distance between E and R is 160 kilometers. So 160 kilometers was traveled by P waves in 32 seconds. So the speed would be 5 km per second. And the same will be the speed of the other set of P waves as well. So if the time taken by the second set of P waves to reach the recording station is 40 seconds, the total distance that is E, B, R will be 200 kilometers. Laws of reflection would tell us that EB will be equal to BR. That means both will be 100 kilometers. Now we have two right angle triangles EAB and RAB. To prove that angle EAB is congruent to triangle RAB, angle EAB will be equal to angle RAB. AB is equal to AB, which is a common. Angle EBA will be equal to angle RBA. This can be proved with the help of law of reflection. Therefore, by angle side angle, EAB is congruent to ABR. According to Pythagoras theorem, EB square is equal to EA square plus AB square. That is, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square of the height and the square of the base of a right angle triangle, which gives us 60 kilometers as the thickness of the crust. Several such experiments indicate that the thickness of the continental crust is 70 to 80 kilometers, while the thickness of the oceanic crust is 10 to 20 kilometers. On an average, the crust can be said to be about 60 kilometers in thickness. Further, we use S waves to calculate the thickness of mantle and core. Let's see how it's done. Observe the diagram carefully. An explosion is created at point E on the Earth's surface, due to which S waves will travel in all directions. Most of them are refracted by the mantle and are received at point R1, R2, R3, R4. Some of these S waves are blocked by the core, which suggests that it is in a liquid state. That is why no S waves reach the seismic recording station R5. Remember, S waves cannot travel through liquids. The part of the earth between the point R3 and R4 is called the S wave shadow zone and the angle formed between these points at the center of the earth is always 150 degrees. Using some geometrical principles, it is possible to calculate the radius of the core, that is the thickness of the core, which is perpendicular to ER4 and ER3 in this diagram, since ER4 and ER3 are tangents to the circle that represents the core. The result that we get using this method is that the radius of the core 
is 3500 kilometers since the radius of the earth is 6400 kilometers the thickness of the mantle would be 2900 kilometers a point to be noted here is that while s waves are blocked by the outer core p waves are received at r5 and all other stations in the shadow zone p wave velocities are not uniform throughout the core which indicates that there is a solid inner core where the velocity of the p waves increases several experiments conducted at various places on the earth indicate that the radius of the inner core is 1200 kilometers which leaves the outer core to be 2300 kilometers so the crust is a thin layer on the earth mantle and core make the major proportion of our earth this was all for the session in the next session we will focus on the properties of different layers of the earth don't forget to watch thank you